Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Pincushion. Um, that was uh, quite something, to say the least. Uh, impressive in many ways. Um, we're going to talk about it, uh, of course, with the people responsible for the, for the film. Uh, and I'm inviting everyone here and everyone who's uh, watching abroad, if you tuned in later, uh, there's a possibility to, to join the conversation. Please do so, that would be so nice. If you're on Curacao or in Greece or on Malta uh, watching this right now, um, we have a hashtag, hashtag live cinema. And we also have, uh, well, my telephone number, it's on the bottom of the screen right now. So, um, well, you can send what you want. Please be decent. Um, uh, and that's a joke. Um, uh, Kifa, we're going to invite uh, uh, the main actress of uh, this uh, film and the director. Uh, give it up for Deborah Haywood, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In a great outfit. And Lily Newmark, ladies and gentlemen. Come join us. Uh, in full outfit. Hello. Good to have you here. Hello. Thank you. Thank Hi. you for coming. Nice to see Lily, you. have a seat. Have a seat. Um, this is what you normally wear or just uh, for this uh, special yeah. occasion? I'm a cat. You're a cat, yes. <laughs> yeah. I noticed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something gave it away. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, well, uh, to say the least, you're a cat person. Yes. Yes, but you are in real life a, a cat person, right? In real life, I am a cat. Sorry? In real life, you're a cat. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> are you a cat person? Because m one of my neighbors was a cat person. She had nine cat, nine uh, kittens and uh, all Oh, I'm jealous. Oh, do you have many cats? No, I haven't got one cat. I used to have a cat called Supercat. You don't Super have a cat. cat? My cat was called Supercat, but... And I used to put food down for her and eat cream with her and because I didn't want her to be the only cat in the family. Ah. So I thought if she thought I was a cat as well, she'd feel better about that, life. That's where it uh, all happened. Yeah, right. but Lily used to do the same. She sent me a photo recently of really? like where she was licking cream yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is this cats. something we have to uh, be uh, concerned about or is, it a, is, this, is this a very healthy development? It's very it's healthy. incredibly healthy, actually. It, it is, yeah? Yeah, you should meow more often. I've got two cats, so um, I maybe sh I should try it? Yeah. Oh, yeah you're, you're a cat <laughs> person as well, so. Yeah, no, I'm a cat, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's going to be complicated, this conversation. <laughs> but I have something special for you guys, because um, we have cat lovers here in the room as well. Uh, are there cat lovers here or dog people? Cat lovers, fingers up. <coughs> dog people. <laughs> dog people, fanatic. Dog people. <laughs> oh, not so many, not so many. Oh, there's a dog even. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, we do have a cat as well. And um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, Tante. Nino, Tante Nino, uh, well, let's be quiet because she has a cat, so let's not freak her out. Yes, but this is a special cat. It's a theater cat. Um, and she's used to being uh, around with many people, right? Yes. Um, uh, Tante Nino, why, why is your name Tante Nino? By the way, it's Auntie Nino, uh, if I translate it uh, into English. Yeah. yeah, my name is Nino, but in uh, West Europe, I mean, uh, people think that it is male name, yeah. because of that I say about myself, Tante Nino. Oh, okay. And Make things is, clear. Yes. yes. And it is uh, my little Gogo. And Gogo in Georgian, I am from Georgia, Gogo in Georgian means may, girl. Ah. That is our little girl. She's seven months old. Okay. And she already was uh, last month in the Rotterdam out in the yes, magazine. Because you're uh, quite a phenomenon here in Rotterdam and you have a, a little uh, uh, theater yourself. You have uh, uh, film screenings and uh, yeah. uh, music and Gogo uh, uh, -Go is always there yeah, amongst the people. Yes, yeah. yes. So she loves the people. So it's okay for Gogo to, to join us on stage while we have this chat? I think, or I think we can ask out? her. We can ask her, but I think it's okay. Okay, yeah? yeah. Okay, shall we uh, give it to, well, Kiva looks like a real person that would oh. like to cuddle a cat. Hi, go, go. It's very good for your serotonin levels, I've heard, your, happy, your happiness oh. levels. Um, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Of course. <laughs> we skip a little bit. Um, Deborah, yes. let's talk about the movie. Ooh, okay. um, if that works with the cat ooh, ooh, uh, yeah. on the couch. Oh, watch your oh. tights. If she's not okay with it, we have to leave her alone, of course. Oh, oh I'm she's all right. There we go. 
<laughs> sounded like a good idea when we when, <laughs> we, when we, we saw the cat for the first oh, time. Maybe I'm just not. Deborah, this is a this, okay, is this is an impressive uh, film, um, uh, uh, um, and yeah. you've been working it on it for so long, ten years in total. Yeah. W uh, was there a moment that you thought, well, it's never going to happen. It's never going to be what it what it became. Mm. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And in fact, I think that was kind of helpful because um, it made me a lot freer with the script because I thought, oh, this is never going to get made. So I was just like, I'm just going to like splur myself out on the page and um, just, you know, be bolder than I normally might have been if I'd have thought I actually it's going to get made. Uh -huh. So I think it, it helped. So me up. at a certain moment, you must have thought, oh, oh my God, people are going to watch it. I thought, oh my God, I shit myself. It's like, oh my God, everyone's going to know who I am yeah. and I what I'm like. You're and used to that concept n now already or are still uh, scared when you're in No, a, in I'm still scared. Still Nobody yeah. in the UK has really seen it. So, um, ah. yeah, so it's still a bit. Uh, to explain that, it's, it's a personal story mm. um, because the main theme is the bullying of uh, children. Uh, 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 in what way was it personal for you? Uh, well, I think it's kind of, people ask if it's biogra uh, autobiographical, but it's more emotionally autobiographical, even though I did go through bullying and those kind of scenarios and stuff. Um, so, yeah, and also I used to use fantasy and daydream to escape and um, kind of as a coping mechanism. Yeah. So. But the, the, the bullying is severe, it's, uh, it's uh, cruel mm. in, in the film. Was it that bad? With yeah, it was worse than that. Really? Mm. What happened? Well, you don't have to go too far in detail. Well, but doctor. Wha but <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. doctor film now. Lie down, lie down on the couch. <laughs> uh. No, it was just like, so what happened? Um, oh, it was just girls who were older than me were jealous and um, just made my life hell and used to write horrible things about me all over the school and yeah. hold me on the bus on the way home and yeah. just things like that. Is, it, is, is there a way of uh, uh, um, uh, taking revenge because the, the end is so intense? Mm. Is that something you, you, you had in mind when you were a kid? Like, I have to make take yeah, revenge? Yeah, like in my head, like, I used to have like giant scissors and I used to trap them in the woods and like tie them to uh, trees and whip them and cut their heads off with giant scissors and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. But Very healthy. <laughs> but kind <laughs> of, yeah. It's gone now, I hope. Well, no, I think like, making this film is kind of a revenge, actually, because I just think, yeah, I hope that you know that I've made this film and that you feel ashamed, because I felt so ashamed when I was being bullied, because I think it's so shameful and you're so humiliated, you just yep. don't want anyone, anyone to know, because yeah. it's just, um, that, I don't know, that's how it makes you feel. Aww. How is Gogo doing? And how is Lily doing? Look good. Yeah, <laughs> you're all uh, you're feeling at home. Um, did you because you read the script, uh, of course, in the beginning, and then <laughs> you were asked to 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 f uh, feature in this film. And uh, was there a moment that you thought I I, I could I can relate to uh, Deborah's story? Yeah, um, when Deborah and I first met, I actually I actually uh, told her how creepy it was, how much I related to the script and that I had to play Iona and she thought that I was lying. Um, so I don't think she was very happy with me in our first meeting. <laughs> but then... Um, That's not true. But then she, uh, then she decided, when she decided that I was the one to play Iona. And yeah. But the bullying, is that something you recognize? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it that severe? Is it a girl thing or is it a, a thing it's of modern times? It's or not is just it a girl thing, no? it's a human thing. Yeah. You know, as you as you can see, there are bullies when you're older as well. It's not about being, it's not just about being a teenager. It's not about being a girl mm -hmm. or a boy. It's about yeah. about repressed feelings, yeah. well not um, dealing with your own trauma and then putting it onto other people. Did you experience anything like that personally? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. And how did you cope? How did you end it, or um, what did you do against Just it? Became a cat. And that's the everything that's the answer so to better. everything, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but did you have a trick, or did you, did you just grow out of it, or um, run away, or what? what no, what, uh, I mean, what luckily I have a very um, loving family, and you know, times when I didn't have friends, I always had my family. Uh -huh. So, um, and then therapy. There goes go go. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, uh, we have questions uh, already uh, on the screen. Uh, one is for you, Lily. Um, Karen from the Netherlands is asking, um, you're quite uh, famous now, um, because since you've been making this film, you've been doing 
extremely a lot. Uh, yeah, your your like life completely films. turned turned over yeah. uh, upside down. Um, now and she asks, uh, uh, was there? Oh no, Lily, you're famous now. Uh, what what has changed the most in your life the last year? That is uh, what Karen is asking. I guess I've been working nonstop which is a good change. Yes, is yeah. that a good thing? Yeah, it's a great thing. How does that feel? Is it, uh, are you famous now? Is that, does it I'm affect I your life in a positive I way? Or I, I don't think I'm famous. I don't want to be no? famous, but okay. I feel like I'm doing what I want to do, which is yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially with a story like this? Especially with a story like this. I want to tell a lot more stories like this. Yeah. I think stories like this are written down and made, but not enough people see them, uh. and I think I want more people to see films like this. Mm. In the meanwhile, uh, Gogo is finding a hideout. Uh, maybe it's better for her to Gogo's made the great escape. find a, a yeah. quiet spot. Um, <laughs> hashtag live cinema or the telephone number on the screen uh, is uh, the way to uh, to send us uh, your question or comments. Uh, please do so. Uh, Kiva, our film critic, programmer of the uh, Toronto International Film Festival, uh, and you've got your own journal, uh, Clio Journal. You're the founding editor. Um, you're here as our film critic the whole weekend. Uh, 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 what did you think of Pincushion? Don't worry, I really liked it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, not, a, not a competition. Yes, no, <laughs> I, it's, I mean, especially for a debut feature, there's everything that we were talking about here in terms of the themes that are brought up, which are so pressing, but the visual style of the film is so accomplished and intricate, and oh. I was so drawn into this world, and I think we have a, you know, a still up here that we can see. Something that really stuck out to me was it, it recalled the you know, Douglas Sirk films and melodrama and the way that costume, mise-en-scene, the color, all drew us into this world and spoke to the inner lives of the characters as well. Um, and I think what's so interesting here too is, you know, when you look at, they're literally cut from the same cloth, you know, they're the way they dress the same, this mother-daughter duo. And it's only, it's only when Iona begins to dress differently when she puts on her school uniform that she begins to change as well. And I just love the way that you represented that visually is so oh, accomplished. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had I wanted to do it like a bit of a fairy tale, so it was yeah. yes, yeah. extraordinary extra, because when you look in, when you read a fairy tale book um, as a child, uh, everything's colourful, everything's extra real, um, but also like really horrible things happen in fairy tales, so I thought that um, within that context that could be more brutal because, you know, in fairy tales, Everyone loves them and they're quite gentle. And but also, it's, you know, people are getting poisoned, put to sleep for a hundred years, trapped in a tower. So I thought within that um, context, that could be more, more brutal and emotionally honest. So yeah. uh, I had this uh, Roald Dahl-esque feel in, in mm. the whole story, and also the design, of course, uh, of the. Of the uh, wh where did you get the inspiration from? Uh, from fairy tale books, really. Yeah, w yeah. which one? Uh, are there specific ones? No, just ones that I used remembered as a child. Yeah. But you know, they were just so saturated, the colours and... Yeah. Did you design... Uh, it looks like a safe haven for the mother and yeah, the child. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, did you have that yourself? Did you, is that a thing you do when you're in a situation like, uh, like uh, the mother and the child being bullied? Uh, no, but I do think that you do um, make your own little safety things. Like I would do f daydreaming to try and make myself safe. Um, you know, hang out with my cat. Um, super cat now deceased, um, and um, and also I remember in my bed I used to you know like get loads of teddies and dolls and stuff and make a little fort and um, just, just try and make a little safe space. So, yeah. Um, Miriam, also from the Netherlands, is asking. Um, well, she says completely devastated after seeing this magical, terrible, realistic movie. Can tell from experience, sadly enough. It brought back that complete, obsolete, lonesome feeling. Cried my eyes out. Uh, homo homini lupus. That's my worst uh, 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 Latin, I think. But uh, best so far uh, at uh, IFFR. Question for the director. Here's the question. Do you know how the uh, ones that bullied ended up? I uh, don't in your know. personal I life, I, I think guess. I they're still in, uh, in my real life or uh, in the film. Yeah, let's go for your real okay. life first. My real life, I think they're still around the town. Um, Married, just you know. Do they know? I don't what know. What I don't what know. What, but what they've done? I, I well, I imagine they can remember. Um, but I try and have empathy with them. I do wonder, think, oh God, do they know I made a film? Because I did, you know, it has been in the local paper and stuff like that. Um, and 
I think also my making the film is a kind of act of revenge, but also I think now I try and um, think, well, actually, I try and have some empathy with them because nobody who has treats somebody like that is happy, are they? So mm. they're probably trapped in their role as well, and, you know, they might not even want to be like that, but, you know, when you're at school, you get, get in that role, and so I think bullying is a kind of survival mechanism yeah. as well, so yeah. I try to have empathy yeah. wherever they are. Difficult? What? To have emp empathy? No, no, I, don't, I find it quite easy. Okay. Now I've made a film. Yeah, now you're having success. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Lily, do you, do you uh, recognize this, this, this urge to, well, to maybe tell the people who bu bullied you uh, what they've done to confront them? Um, no, I'm not a vengeful person. Um, everyone keeps asking if this sort of film is revenge, and it's it's not. It's it's closure. I mean, having to go through all these experiences again is was pretty traumatizing. Mm. But it put it put all our problems to rest. Mm. And finding uh, a shared experience Deborah and I had um, was definitely helpful for mm. us both. It I think meant it was healing. It was healing. It meant that we. Neither of us were alone, and that's what we want. Um, that's the message we sort of want from this film: is that you might think that you're alone in your experience and in your world, but you share the same world as everyone else, and there is bound to be someone else who's had the same experience as you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's ex exactly what Miriam uh, also said, right? Uh, Diego from Madrid says, uh, "It's a good question. What do teenager teenagers think about a film? Um, do you know anything about the reception amongst teenagers when they watch this? Because it's about their cruelness." maybe we still experiencing it. Do you, do, do, did you get any feedback? Uh, there's only been, because a lot of adults obviously attend the film festival, there have only been a few teenagers, but what we want to do is tour the film around schools so that we can um, have a conversation mm. with um, people of the age in the film about, about it, because, mm. I mean, it's incredibly uh, important to talk about it. That's the whole point of it. But. Um, the few teenagers that have come up to us have said, you know, they're so thankful that we've made this film because they've been through the same experiences and it's, it's, not, it's not like it's nice to see someone else's experience them, but they feel less alone mm. through seeing other people experience it. Mm. Um, well, I asked before, is it, is it a, a modern thing, a modern times thing? Is it something that's getting worse nowadays? But the sexting element uh, is something that is happening all over the world makes it that make uh, is that element making everything harsher um more horrible even or well i, I don't know about sexting but um there's definitely uh a lot of my my like my generation was i guess the first sort of cyberbullying generation mm -hmm. and there was this thing called like uh honesty box on facebook which w i think was like the worst invention and you could basically write the worst things possible to people, and it would be anonymous, so you wouldn't know who um, who wrote it to you. Yeah. And um, this is a horrible thing, right? Yeah. Oh, you're laughing at the cat. Yeah. But um, it's, it's uh, yeah, I think there's no stopping this horrible monster that's created by the internet. Oh. Well, is, isn't not. there is there a solution? You can't do anything about it. I don't know, unless the internet dies. Yes. No, well, it I doesn't. Know. I don't <laughs> expect it to, to The die. only solution that we've managed to come up with is making a film about it. So yeah. Yeah. hopefully it opens a dialogue so like this kind of thing so we can talk about it. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so. There's a, a question uh, from uh, Emilia from uh, Azerbaijan. Um, uh, how was it for you to prepare for the role and carry it? What did you learn from it and what advice can you give to young people to go through bullying? What would you advise to parents? Well, let's start with the, the kids first. What would, you, what, what would be your advice to children? I think um, find someone you trust to, to talk about what you're going through. I think the worst thing possible is to keep it a secret and let it boil until it comes out mm -hmm. um, into something horrible and you, you you become someone that you don't want to be. I think if you, f if you try as soon as possible to find someone to talk about it with, then that's the best solution. Yeah. And, and uh, for parents, have, do they have to be more attentive to the problem? 
yeah. are they aware enough what's happening? I know it's difficult because everything happens um, on the internet a lot of the time, and it's you know it's hard to see it physically. But I think if parents are m more sensitive to the topic and ask more yeah. questions without being too direct or aggressive, because if you're going through something like that, you'll sometimes shut down. yeah, sometimes yeah. You, you don't you don't want people to ask questions about it because yeah. it's quite painful and you and you're ashamed of it as well. So you don't you don't want to tell your parents, especially yeah. what you're going through, because you don't want them to be hurt or sad yeah. by it. Yeah. But I think. I think if parents um, ask more questions, um, I think that would be helpful. Um, the, the element of the mother in this story is a uh, well, remarkable one. There's this smothering love. Mm. She is sad, she has her own misery, but she shares the misery with her daughter. Why did you choose for that angle, Deborah? Um, can you explain that a bit, sorry? Well, she's so um, smothering in her love. I yeah. Think that's a, the direct, uh, and she's almost, um, keeping her daughter f uh, uh, from being free and mm. liberated and mm. to grow up. Yeah. Wh why did you choose for that angle? She takes her daughter down I instead of yeah. pushing her up. Well, I think she has. Is that what parents do, uh, in your opinion? Um, no, but I think it's a danger. Um, I'm I'm both a daughter and a mother, and I do think um, I, as a daughter, I used to lie to my mom and protect her from things and now as a mother I'll, I'll do it I'll lie and pretend I'm all right if I'm not and you know I see my daughter doing it as well I think we a natural like the mother-daughter relationship is very complex and I think yeah. there is a tendency because you love your mom or your daughter that much to try and protect them so you don't tell them the truth about stuff but actually that can be um, very damaging mm. um, but I think also Lynn tries to keep her uh, Iona young because she sees the outside world as a dangerous place. So mm -hmm. I think she tries to protect her by keeping it childlike, keeping it safe. Um, but I think, you know, sadly, she's, she makes the wrong decision and yeah. um, ends up actually harming her yeah. daughter. Yeah. So. Let's go to the mother, uh, uh, specifically to uh, a couple of scenes. Well, the latter scenes, Kiva. Yeah, um, I think the scene, um, maybe we'll roll the clip now. I know we've just seen the film, but it was, it's so, moving well and then we can discuss it after okay. that. Oh sorry to bother you. I was um I'm, I'm sorry, I was just wondering how, um I was just wondering if you'd finished with the ladders. And I brought you this. I made it myself. <laughs> Thanks. Bye then. See you soon. Uh. Bye. So frustrating. Ugh. Oh, it's yeah. Really, <laughs> and I think there's there's so many parts of this film that are difficult to watch and hard. And there's something about that that I kept reflecting on, and I and I realized it's because, and it's you know we've touched on it a bit already. So rarely do we consider films about bullying that continue on into mm. adult life as mm. well, right? Like what happens when mean teens grow up? Yeah. They grow into cruel adults yeah. as well. And the film is, I, I find, really generous to Lynn as well, that gives her this depth and this backstory, um, even though she's I I slightly frustrating. Like, you want her to not be so stagnant. You want her to be able to find the courage to speak up, but she just can't. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, as we were saying, I think this multi-generational aspect to the film, um, I, I think it reverberates a with a lot more um, depth because of that, because it goes beyond just teen bullying yeah. in a way as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Not to minimize that in any way. Well, th I do think it does, uh, when you've been bullied as a child, I think it does have a massive effect on you mm -hmm. as an adult. And also, I think there's something really scary about adult bullying, because at school, you know that one day you're going to leave school, so you can probably never see them again. But as an adult, when you're in an environment, it's not, you know, you can't just leave your life mm -hmm. um, very easily anyway. So I think, yeah, there is something um, extra scary. And also, uh, who do you, you know, you can't go and tell a teacher as an adult, who do you tell? And, and of course, then there's the shame factor as well. And uh, I think it's, 
even more shameful as an adult than it is a child being bullied because a child it's kind of it, you expect that within the territory of being a child but mm -hmm. as an adult you're supposed to be able to stick up for yourself and um so yeah but um only last week at another festival um you know i've had people come up to me and say you know i've been bullied at school i and now i still can't cope and one woman was being bullied uh, now at um in work and you know she was in tears and i thought god i really do recognize that pain um and um and also for me personally i went to um as an adult, somebody knocked on my door once and asked to, uh, one of the neighbours asked to borrow um, I, an ironing board. So I lent her my ironing board and then I went round for it about a week later and she was like, oh yeah, I haven't finished with it yet. So then uh, like two weeks later, I'd like go round and say, have you finished with the ironing board? And she was like, no. And I was like, but how, how as an adult do you negotiate this stuff? Like, mm. because you can't go and tell your mom. I'm like, oh, she maybe, you know, so it's awful. And um, as a director, I was like, oh my God, how do I direct when I, you know, I'm quite vulnerable. So I went um, to an assertiveness class and there was this woman there and we had to do these role play things and there was a woman there and um, somebody had lent her stepblood, borrowed her stepblood and she couldn't get them back. Mm. And you know, it's kind of a, like a really little, little thing, but to her, it was a huge thing and she you knows she was shaking. And, and um, I, so I just think all oh, this stuff is like really painful and we don't really talk about it that much because we're embarrassed and, you know, humiliated and, you know. We're all making out that we're really happy on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you would expect for the, the mother to grow into the stronger woman or something. Well, in a normal, regular fa fairy tale, you would expect her to stand up at the end of the movie. But uh, there's no hope whatsoever for her. Um, why did you choose for that? It's very dark. The end is so dark. I was shocked. I think many people were shocked. But what did you want to say with that? Um, well, I kind of see it as almost a, a kind of happy ending in a way because you know she's had these clues along the way there's no such thing as death um that she's found a way to be with Iona which is not going to cause any Iona any more pain and um you know she's learned that people who've been bullied uh, who have bullied and then somebody died and they con was consumed by guilt so it's ticking all these boxes for her I think mm. and um and so I, I think you know if you choose to believe that she's gone to, um, you know, she's now a cat and she's cat with own, yeah, then it's happy. Mm. But if you, you know, choose to interpret it as like, uh, you know, oh fuck, she killed herself, then, um, then hopefully there's com some comfort in the fact that the bullies have been punished and um, for doing it. But I don't know, life isn't always like happy and not a happy end no. no and fairy tales often aren't so you know no. within that context i thought that i could have that ending because you know some fairy tales are really brutal yes and, they can be and we love dark. them for that because yeah. we want to experience that pain mm -hmm. without having actual ha pain in real life so mm -hmm. okay um leo from geneva says uh, what was the inspiration something completely different for the soundtrack um the music i wanted something kind of fairy tale sounding and um so i we got a great composer in called natalie holt and i explained the kind of feel and and gave her a few samples and examples and um then she just went and um and ran with it and um yeah yeah do you like the soundtrack? I liked it a lot. Oh, good. I was a big fan, I already Great. told you. Um, uh, 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 Karen from the Netherlands. Um, Deborah, how did you find Lily? Um, she was in a forest <laughs> under, <laughs> under, a, under a stone. <laughs> no, our casting directors um, did a big call out and got loads of girls in. And I think they'd met Lily before because she'd been in a a pop video so I was watching on my laptop like loads and loads of girls and lots of great girls who could act and but they weren't Iona and um, because I wanted I was looking for somebody who looked untouched by mm. modern life and mm. as though she was almost in a fairy tale almost like other mm. and then I came across Lily and I was like because I was looking for somebody because in my head when I was writing it Iona had long black hair and you know huge eyes like saucers and then I was looking 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 and then I came across Lily and I was like oh she's got an interesting face but um but she you know she looked like this rare beautiful salmon and um and then I was like <laughs> <laughs> but it's not <laughs> sorry but it's do you want to comment uh, Lily or <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's not Iona because Iona's got you know long black hair and and then I pressed play and I was like oh my god it's it is Iona and then I was just in love and I was like yeah then my stress levels went whoo because I was like yeah I knew we've got a film then I knew she could you know she'd got the aura uh, to carry the film oh. my little cat <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Joanna, because, well, perfect casting as well for the mother, of course. Yeah. How did that you. go? Because that was a specific thing, right? You saw her on TV? Yeah. Well, I really, I wanted um, Susan Boyle to play the mom, but Gavin, my beautiful <laughs> producer, just said no. Um, <laughs> so then I had to think about actors, and, um, and I think it was Gavin that actually suggested uh, Joanna um, and anyway so I went onto YouTube yeah. and looked and saw Joanna on she was being interviewed in on BAFTA red carpet yeah. and just the way that she was listening to the question she was like listening and listening and 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 it just drew me in so much because I was like God because of her intense it, look or yeah because I was like is she going to like smile and answer this you know in the show's biz way or is she going to like give the person the interviewer like a real bollocking I couldn't tell so she'd got this like unpredictability about her yeah. and um, and I was like yeah I want her and luckily yeah. she wanted me to <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a Dutch question I'm gonna say it in Dutch uh, of iemand uh, uh, Google uit de ballenbak wil komen halen die kreeg ik zojuist binnen via uh, the message service uh, Jan also from the Netherlands uh, he says it in uh, in English a question for the director what were your inspirations to be become a filmmaker um, uh, as an amateur filmmaker, I'm noticing that Ghostbusters is very important to me now. Uh, do you also experience uh, this? What? That Ghostbusters well, this is very important? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't it's know. It's an open session. I didn't have um, ambitions to be a director, really. Um, I wanted to be a writer, and I was writing novels, but I couldn't be bothered to write the, uh, the description. Mm. Um, and I was more interested in character and dialogue and stuff, so I was writing. And then I uh, entered a short film scheme, like a competition kind of thing, um, where I thought I would get paired up with a director if I got through. And then the script got through and it got a commission. And then the exec said, oh, and now you're going to direct you it. You direct And film. I was like, ah, I don't <laughs> know what a director does. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, you're about to find out. So, And I still feel like I'm finding out. Yeah. Um, kind of make it up as I go along. I used to feel really ashamed that I haven't been to film school, but now I think actually it's an advantage. And I think if in you go way? in, uh, well, because be you don't, if you don't know the rules, you can't stick by them and say, oh no, it has mm. to be done like this. So it's more like, oh, shall we try it like this? Uh, like Lily said that I don't direct like other people and Joanna said it as well. So mm. it's like, oh, well, I don't know how other people direct. So I'll just do it my own way mm. and hope that, you know, hope for the best. But I think if you're making stuff as well, like with no money and just going out there, then that's the best thing because then you haven't got like the pressure, you haven't got anyone eyes on you. I think you can just be really creative and go for it and, you know, turn your cast into cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Lily, what, what made you decide to, to, to become an actor? Is there a certain moment or a movie you've been watching or a series that you thought, well, this is what, I'm, what I want to do? Um, because you're also modeling, you're doing a lot. No, no, I don't model anymore. I did that for a little bit. But no, I've always been acting um, ever since I was little. It's just uh, a performance is, I guess, a coping mechanism with being an outcast. But um, I decided it was going to be my career um, when I was, I guess, I guess 17, 18. Um, I joined uh, the National Youth Theatre when I was a teenager in the costume department. Um, and then I kind of graduated into acting and I joined another theatre company in South London. Um, and then I did uh, my training, I did my degree um, in acting contemporary theatre um, at East 15 Acting School. And I mean, it felt like I was doing the right thing and it and it was the right thing just before I graduated you know I got my first role in a TV show and then Pinkersham was my my first uh, lead in a film mm. and yeah and it all kind of went from there yeah quite a lot quite actually. a lot yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a good question for you as well it's from Kino Nove Horizonti I don't know where he is, but uh, or she uh, could be anywhere. Oh, Kino is of course a, a cinema somewhere. Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, the question is, how do you think the future of I Ilona could look like um, um, if you take it from the end of the film? Mm. Hopeful or? Yeah, I think Iona definitely needs to go Iona. to therapy to deal with all her trauma. Mm -hmm. It's not a joke. She should, and then. Um, 
I think she should write about her experiences, like Deborah wrote about her experiences. Mm -hmm. And make a movie. And find something positive yeah. um, from it, because if you just see the negative side, then you don't go anywhere. Hmm. What do you think? No, I think you find a creative a way to express yourself and, um, yeah, either creative or uh, do something, achieve something. Um, because I think if you've put up with bullying and gone through bullying, then you've got a certain bravery around you anyway because you've had to face that every day. So you may as well use that and channel that energy and um, go and do something that you want to do. Because we're all going to die one day anyway, so you may as well just try and go for it. And have a little bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> also, can I just say thank you for having us here? And uh, sure. Thank you to the you festival. So. We're just absolutely thrilled to be uh, screening Pincushion. So thank you. No, thanks. You're, it's great <laughs> to have you here. Um, oh. I think we have time for <laughs> one or two more questions. If you have one uh, you really want to ask, uh, just send it now. Um, Magdalena from Poland and Monica from Slovakia are sending a message together. I don't know how they're doing this, but this is 2018. Everything can happen. Great movie, uh, Magdalena and Monica say. Uh, one of these, those stories that make me believe outsiders are a way more interesting people than the so-called normal people. Thank, thank you, you for the movie that had a heart. Oh, thank you for watching. Yolanda from the Netherlands. Lovely and recognizable film. Love the end. We lost our cat recently. Oh. Uh, this is what she would do every night. Maybe Gogo's uh, uh, attitude or something. Uh, thank you, Yolanda. Thank you for sending it. There was another question as well. And uh, why isn't there any uh, hope uh, at the end of the film for anyone? Is it for us to fill in? Uh, we just had it on the screen. I don't know what the name of the pe person was who sent it. Um, Cynthia says, it's all drama, bu drama, bully, and heavy, painful shit. Oh, <laughs> OK. Now it's gone again. But there's no. Um, a positive turn. That's uh, you've made that decision somewhere in the, in no. the process. Well, I, I think there is a positive turn. I think yeah, yeah, like you were yeah, explaining. Yeah, So yeah. I think it's up to our own interpretation. You can in, uh, interpret it as a positive or a, a negative, or you know, a dreamy or. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe none of it all happened. Maybe it was all in somebody's imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Jago said it. He said, uh, why the story does not propose any solution. But you've answered, answered that question. Um, uh, to finish it off, um, um, What's the, the next project? Because this is, has been such a personal uh, project. Uh, wh wh what can you do afterwards? Uh, next? I think I'm going to um, do a horror nightmare kind of film about a woman who's okay. um, suffering from postnatal depression. Um, it's called Cuckoo. So is this also, in a way, autobiographical? Or uh, yes. Yes. Well, inspired okay. by autobiographical yeah. elements. Yeah. That's what you will be keeping doing keep yeah. on doing yeah well i don't know career. what i keep on doing but for now uh, there's a few things i need to get out <laughs> okay uh, and that's going to be uh, released when or, or, or when are you going to make this because this I'm, took you I'm 10 still years I'm, yeah i don't know hopefully not 10 years no i need to get get stuck into the writing and yeah. hopefully if we, you know this film has some momentum and people um think that i've got something to say then uh, hopefully you know i'll get the opportunity to make another one yeah. i think it's um I think it's very, uh, something like 2% of women, the uh, statistics at the moment, yeah. get to make a second film mm -hmm. feature. So I'm just really hoping that to do have the opportunity to make another one. We hope to see you again. Oh, thank you. Hope Festival. to be here Same again. Same for you, Lily, as well. Thanks. And thanks um, to everyone online who watched as well. That's yes. really generous of you. Um, thanks for coming. Let's hear it for uh, Deborah, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And Lily. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so um, much. Kiba, thank you so much. Thank you. Go, go. Thank oh. you so much. <laughs> and um, everyone cat. watching yeah, abroad, thank you so <laughs> much like for sending oh your God. questions. Like um, so if you have uh, any uh, more questions, keep sending them. We'll forward them to the, to the people behind the, the script. We have another screening lined up in a couple of hours. Uh, and it's uh, La Hollandesa, Maud and Messi, uh, a European premiere. So tune in again. And uh, thank you again.